Hey guys, Brando New Productions here. Now, in my previous tutorial, I actually discussed the try catch block um, of Java, where you can actually try certain code and catch the errors. If you've not seen this tutorial, uh, please be sure to check it out. A annotation should appear linking to it right now. Okay, so what we discussed in the last tutorial is we set up some purposeful errors, and then we caught the errors. And as you can see, as soon as we caught the errors, it did what's ever in the code, and then it kind of skipped over anything else. So what what might happen is um, in this sort of circumstance where we have a, a math error occur here, but we need um, we need something to happen after the error occurs. So for example, um, at the end of this code we need x to equal 0 and y to equal 0 and this is done because we can say x equals 0 and y equals 0 so after we provide the answer of y divided by x we set x and y equal to 0 so at the end of this code what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out the values of uh, x and y so we're gonna say x equals and then plus x and system dot out dot print line whoops y equals and then the value of then the value of y. Now this gives us an error because we cannot actually access variables that are in the try block. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to say out move these variables out here. int x equal to zero and y equal to two. So what we want to happen is we're just going to delete this for now because this is nonsense. <laughs> Um, so what we want to happen is when the code is executed, we want to create an x equal to 0, a y equal to 2, divide them, and then after we're done dividing, we want to reset the variables so they both equal 0. And then we're going to print out uh, the line, or we'll print out the values of both variables, so essentially we set them equal to 0, so they should be 0, right? Uh, wrong. We get, <laughs> we get the error, uh, the arithmetic exception divided by 0 at line 11, and uh, we can see that x equals 0 and y equals 2. So, um, what Java did is, as it tried this uh, this code block here, it actually found an error here and skipped immediately to the catch block, and then after it skipped to the catch block, it went to the next line of code. So it skipped over these two lines of code. But this poses a problem because no matter how this answer actually works out, we need x and y to equal zero by the end of that uh, execution. Well. Java has actually created something that will actually solve that problem. It's called the finally block. So what the finally block is, is it is a part of try catch. It's called try catch finally is its full name. Um, and what it does is it allows code to be executed no matter what. So because we need x and y to equal zero no matter what this answer is, the finally block can do that for us. So essentially what we have now is we're going to try dividing y by x and if an error occurs we're going to print the stack trace but no matter if an error occurred or if an error did not occur we're going to set x and y both equal to zero and then we're going to print out their values so now um, x and y should both equal zero and as you can see it did work out that way uh, we've got an arithmetic exception divided by 0 at line 11, but it actually still printed out x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now, what you can al also do is um, normally when you're doing, um, when you're actually working on uh, uh, programs, you can, uh, uh, hold on, what am I trying to say? Okay, so when you're actually working on programs, a lot of times if you need if a certain condition is met, you're going to need to return, right? And this return will actually exit out of the um, the current code block. So essentially what this try is going to do is it's going to return and simply end the code execution. But the thing is, since it's in this try block and we have a finally block here, um, it's actually going to uh, set x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 before it returns. We can test this out by pressing uh, run here and Okay, we're going to need to put these in here as well. So we could actually test this out by pressing run. So it tries to return, but before it actually returns, it sets x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and prints out the values of x and y. So essentially, 
This provides immediate access to anything that needs to be done at the end of any code execution. Another example of how this can work out well is say you are creating a um, file reader system. So we're just going to get rid of all this code that we currently have. And we have the pretty much generic try catch finally already set up. So we're setting up a file system and um, what's going to happen is what we're going to do is we're we need to read files. So we're going to create a buffered reader reader and in the try block we're going to make it equal to a new buffered reader and before I forget I'm just going to import the buffered reader here. Now inside the buffered reader it actually takes in a um, whoa okay yes a uh, reader so we're going to create a new file reader and then inside of this file reader we actually need to specify a file so we're going to create a new file and let's just give it the path of um, it's going to be a text.txt okay so import the various classes here so what we're doing here is we're creating a buffered reader reader and then we're setting equal to a new buffered reader, which is a new file reader, which takes in a new file. So we're reading the contents of text.txt, and let's just create a string contents equal to reader dot uh, read line. Okay, so that's going to read the first line of the text file text.txt. Now, obviously, hold on, let's system.out.print contents. So we're actually doing something here. Now obviously this text.txt file does not exist because we did not create it. So this line here will actually produce an error uh, saying that um, the text file does not exist so we can't actually create a buffered reader to read it. But the thing is, in order to actually um, like to make things efficient and we need to clean up our own garbage uh, as I taught in my actually reading files tutorial, we always need to close buffered readers and buffered writers. And this will actually release the memory so other applications and other things can use it. So this uh, keeps it so our program is a memory hog. But the thing is, once this executes and uh, the code actually figured out, or Java actually figures out that there's an error here because the file does not exist, it will simply jump here and then jump here. So it never actually reaches this reader.close line, but we need the reader to be closed in order to conserve memory. So we can actually put that into the finally block. So we can say reader.close and put that there, and it's going to throw us an error. And it's going to want us to surround it with a try cat. Oh. No? Okay, never mind. Ignore that. It's going to want to surround it with a try catch because that's what it does. But we're just going to add a throws declaration and everything will be solved, right? Right, right. Okay, so luckily Eclipse has this all set up for us. So essentially, reader.close, um, it'll throw an IO exception if reader is null, I believe. Or if reader does not have a value. But anyway, if we run this code, we can press run and... Uh, Yes, there we go. So it says java.io.file not found exception text.txt, and then it actually gives us a null pointer exception at this line because our reader is actually equal to null. So this was a pretty pretty poor example because because of the way I have it set up, but. Uh, besides the point, this is the classic example of why you would want to use the finally block. Because whether or not the file exists, whether or not there's a problem reading the file, we still need to close the buffered reader to conserve memory. So what we're going to say here is if reader is not equal to null, then we actually want to close it. So if we run this, uh, we now see that we get an error. The system cannot find the file specified, which is thrown at line 16. So it cannot find the file specified, it uh, cannot successfully create the reader, so nothing really matters. But say there was a problem with string contents equals reader.readline. It would throw the error, but we still need to close this buffered reader. So we would jump to the finally block, and um, we would close the reader. And everything would work out nicely. 
So that's how to use a try catch finally block in order to conserve memory and um, reset variables if need be. Hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial. I, I did find myself talking kind of fast, but that's because I actually am a huge fan of try catch finally blocks. I, I find them very interesting. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in Java pla Developing a Platform Game Part 2. Have a fantastic day. Peace.